The Chilean coast is one of the longest in the world. Its seaboard winds down between the Pacific Ocean and the Andes mountain range. Starting in the Atacama Desert and reaching all the way to Antarctica. It possesses a great variety of species and in some areas has a very wide range of endemic species. In the last few years the coastal areas of Chile have experienced a severe degree of environmental deterioration population growth, technological development, industrialization and fishing activities have contributed to the loss of valuable habitats, critically endangering numerous marine species. In 2003, the Chilean government, through the National Commission for the Environment, CUNAMA, took steps to address the situation by approving the National Strategy for Biodiversity, which calls for a series of measures aimed at countering the negative effects that human activity has had on these coasts. As part of the state-sponsored effort, commitments have been made on the basis of recommendations set forth in the Convention on Biological Diversity to conserve and restore ecosystems by 2010. These measures are aimed at slowing the loss of the planet's biodiversity. In a joint effort on the part of the Global Environment Facility, GEF, and the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, in conjunction with 12 Chilean government agencies and two NGOs, the GEF Marine Project for Conservation of Biodiversity of Worldwide Importance along the Chilean coast was forged. These institutions have orchestrated efforts in Chile to protect three marine and coastal areas, joining elements of governance, financial sustainability, and participation of civil society in order to meet local and national needs. Among the biological preservation measures to be taken, one that is considered fundamental is the integration and active participation of the communities and their individual members in the conservation of the country's ecosystems through sustainable activities that can be maintained and expanded upon over time. The three pilot areas in Chile were chosen after extensive scientific research determined their worldwide importance. Factors that were considered in choosing these areas included high levels of spatial and ecological heterogeneity coupled with low levels of human intervention, the absence of sources of pollution, and a high level of biodiversity in marine, freshwater, and land habitats. The participation and commitment of local communities, as well as the managerial and financial commitment of the regional and municipal authorities, were considered to be fundamental factors in the creation of favorable conditions for environmentally low impact, productive ventures. In the future, it is hoped that this initiative will be replicated along the coastline to form a wide network of protected, multi-use marine and coastal areas. The virtually uninhabited Isla Grande de Atacama, a protected marine and coastal area, encompasses numerous and varied ecosystems, which include intermarine and submarine areas that are important to the conservation and preservation of marine and coastal biodiversity. Located in the middle of the Atacama Desert in northern Chile, this area stretches over 3,839 hectares of protected ocean and land. The area extends 36 kilometers from Punta de Morro in the north to the southern bank of the Copiapo River in the south and includes the two islands of Isla Grande and Chata Chica. Because of its unique, rich ecosystems, Isla Grande is the nucleus of this protected area. It is one of the four Pacific islands that together are home to over 90% of the world's total population of humbled penguins. Other endemic species, such as the junco, garuma, wanais, piqueros, 
certain kinds of pelicans and lelings are found on the island's Bahia Cisnes or Swan Bay. Its crystal clear waters are ideal for diving, and its vast seaweed prairies made up of brown seaweed, huidos, and cochayuyos are a natural refuge against predators, providing shelter to hundreds of invertebrates, mollusks, and fish. These invertebrates make up more than 80% of northern Chile's fish population. Surface species include the chungungos, or Chilean otters, bottlenose dolphins, and colonies of sea lions. The protected marine and coastal area of Isla Grande de Atacama displays a great spatial and ecological heterogeneity. Its cliffs are exposed to the ocean, and its beautiful beaches and extensive wetlands surrounding the Copiapo River's outlet serve as home to a huge avian population that visits the island periodically, emigrating from faraway places across the world to other wetlands in southern Chile. These elements are what make up the landscape and organic diversity that is characteristic of marine and coastal ecosystems along the Humboldt Current. The land portion of this area is arid and boasts impressive gorges, passes, and canyons that emerge from the desert. This desert is one of the most important sites for vertebrate marine and estuary fossils in all of South America and is an invaluable paleontological site. Vestiges left behind by the culture of Copiapó provide valuable archaeological and architectural remains of the Changos, contemporaries of the Diaguitas who inhabited this area for 4,000 years and then disappeared, leaving only their stone constructions and silence. Currently, artisan fishermen are the main stakeholders in the difficult task of balancing the demands of biodiversity, conservation, and sustainable development. They have committed their support for the GEF Marine Project and will themselves be the beneficiaries of the productive diversification that will result from increased tourism, applied scientific research, and other environmentally low-impact activities. Because of its rich biodiversity, its paleontological and archaeological importance, and its potential as a tourist attraction, Isla Grande de Atacama is a place of unique contrast, where the past and the present merge in ways that can benefit future generations. Lafken Mapulawa, which means ocean and land of the sequoia tree in Mapuche, the native language, includes practically the entire coastline of the municipality of Rio Negro in the province of Osorno. It stretches along approximately 32 kilometers of coastline between Punta Tiburón, Sharks Point, and Punta Loveria, Sea Lion Point, which are to the south of the cove and small-scale fishing port of Bahia Mansa. The marine portion of this area extends for a nautical mile from the point of high tide, and the estuary takes in the Wayalway and Chalhuaco rivers in an area that runs for 1,500 meters from their outlets. Due to the quality of their aquatic environment, these rivers exhibit a high level of diversity and are representative of other ecosystems, making them an exemplary site for conducting scientific research and especially biological studies. The coastline of Lafkin Mapulawal is exposed with few beaches, heavy surf, and native vegetation growing right up to the shoreline.
The marine environment is comprised of 704 different species, of which 73% are benthic, or bottom-living invertebrates, followed by fish, marine birds, and estuary species. Lafkin Mapulawal incorporates fish spawning and nursery areas for species such as the robolo, puye, lisa, and pejere, and also houses saltwater biological communities. As part of this project, extensive work has been done with the surrounding communities, which are mostly comprised of Mapuche Wiyiche ethnic groups, such as the Wiyelwe, Loi Kumile, Nirawe, and Condor peoples. The aim here is to provide these communities with the knowledge they need to carry out the work involved in sustaining and developing the area on their own based on their own culture and world view. The pristine state of the land along this marine conservation area is viewed as one of the zone's greatest treasures. As a matter of fact, the coastal forest portion of the Lafkin Mapulawal Reserve is one of the few places on Earth where the native forest remains relatively intact, thanks to the fact that human presence and intervention is still very rare, and the watersheds are still virtually undeveloped. Efforts to protect and conserve marine and coastal biodiversity are, therefore, closely linked to the work being done to protect and conserve coastal forest lands and their watersheds. The establishment at Lafkin Mapulawao was founded to contribute to the conservation and development of the area's ecological heritage and to the development of the community. The Mapuche Wiiche's culture and traditions are firmly grounded in the knowledge and conservation of nature, which is why ecotourism is a natural economic activity that, far from working against it, serves to value and highlight these aspects of the culture. Lafkin Mapulawal serves as a new model for the preservation of our natural resources. It is vital for all of us to become involved and play an active part in the wondrous task of valuing and protecting what we have so that we can hand it down to future generations. The protected marine and coastal area of Francisco Coluane is located 180 kilometers southwest of Punta Arenas and comprises a territory of approximately 67,197 hectares that includes the Strait of Magellan and the fjords adjacent to Carlos III Island. This area exhibits a landscape of fjords and channels typical of Patagonia's Tierra del Fuego region which takes in water flowing from the Atlantic Ocean and from the Cape Horn Current, as well as glaciers that calve directly into the ocean. These factors, added to the rivers and the strong, unceasing winds and abundant precipitation, together generate a unique, heterogeneous, and biologically productive ecosystem in this area. The cultural value of this area, both historical and archaeological, is the legacy of the exclusively marine lifestyle of the canoeing communities that inhabited it for 6,000 years and that have no parallel anywhere else in the world. The Carlos III Island area has been described as being of special importance, since it stands as a monument to the lives and work of these now extinct people who sailed under extreme conditions amidst the breathtaking landscapes of mountains glaciers, rivers, and untouched forests. 
the characteristics of the area allow for the existence of at least nine species of aquatic mammals, including three species of whales, two species of dolphin, Guillen and Coipo, more than 25 types of birds, and more than 20 different kinds of fish. This area is an important feeding area for humpback whales and is a breeding spot for large colonies of sea lions, Magellan penguins, rock cormorants, and brown skuas. At the center of this area lies the Marino Francisco Coluane Park, chosen for its wealth of marine life and its particular geographic conditions, as well as its oceanographic and climatic features which make it of great interest to the scientific community and to nature enthusiasts. These groups find the park ideal for conducting their studies and research due to its biodiversity, while enjoying awe-inspiring scenery cloaked in history and mystery. The land vegetation features Magellanic Coiway, cinnamon and Leñadora trees, and cypress. Thick forests of Weedle serve as shelter and food for submarine communities. Carlos III Island boasts a high-end tourist complex, a pioneering private venture that sets the pace for the future development of scientific activities and ecotourism. The immensity of a place frozen in time melts into the fjords and glaciers in southern Chile. These formations are thousands of years old, colossal structures of ice and light that invite visitors to reflect on the origins of life on our planet, our destiny, and the role we play in the preservation of nature. The three areas we have just described are the initial framework for the foundation of a national system of protected multi-use marine and coastal areas. The GEF Marine Project is working to consolidate an institutional structure that will allow for the formation and self-management of the system. Its constituents work side by side with the local communities and politicians, academics and scientists, in order to break down the barriers to the establishment of new protected marine and coastal areas along the Chilean coast. The objective is to conserve the coastline's priceless biodiversity and preserve it for the benefit of the entire world.